In quantum mechanics, mass can be entangled, which is weird. Usually we think of entanglement as being about spin. So, for example, the quantum spins of two particles might be entangled so that they always both have opposite spins. But despite how weird that is, that seems okay because the direction of the spin is not an inherent part of the particles. But mass can also do this. It can be that the mass of a particle takes on one value when another particle has a certain amount of energy, and the mass of the same particle takes on another value when the second particle has a different amount of energy. You heard me right, the same type of particle can have more than one mass. In fact, one particle in particular is well known for regularly existing in a superposition of different mass states. Of course, it's the ever weird neutrino. Let me explain. A positive pion is a type of short-lived subatomic particle with a mass of 139 mega electron volts, and it primarily decays into an anti-muon and a muon neutrino. The anti-muon has a mass of about 105 mega electron volts. The trouble is, the muon neutrino doesn't have a well-defined mass. If you could weigh a muon neutrino, you wouldn't get the same answer every time. It's in a superposition of three values. This is a result of the phenomenon called neutrino mixing. Let me explain. So the weak nuclear force has the ability to link up-type quarks to down-type quarks, and to link charged leptons, things like electrons and muons, to neutral leptons, which are their neutrinos. Now, the way in which a particle propagates isn't necessarily related to the way a particle interacts with the weak nuclear force, and propagation behavior is determined by mass. So there's two types or eigenmodes for neutrinos. There's the type of neutrinos that propagate in a fixed way, and then there's the type of neutrinos that interact with the weak force in a fixed way. And experiments can verify that these two types aren't the same. Rather, a muon-type neutrino, which is associated with a weak interaction, can also be viewed as a superposition of the three different mass-type neutrinos. So let's say that a positive pion decay happens, which overwhelmingly favors decaying via the weak force to an anti-muon and a muon neutrino. Well, when those two particles fly away, they're entangled. The muon is the same as its propagating mass description, so there's no ambiguity there. But the trouble arises for the neutrino. See, the energy of the decay is fixed. There's a set amount of mass that the pion can convert to energy. Furthermore, the momenta of the anti-muon and the neutrino need to be equal and opposite to conserve momentum. So we can describe the decay products as a superposition of any set of momentum-energy combinations that satisfy those criteria. And there are three possible options corresponding to the three mass values that the neutrinos can take. So that means that the muon's momentum is entangled with the mass state of the neutrino. So if you measure the muon's momentum at its high, then, if you could, you would measure the largest mass state of the neutrino. If the momentum is low, then you would measure the low mass state of the neutrino. That is, the mass of the neutrino is entangled. By the way, it gets even weirder. If you don't measure the mass state, but instead try to measure the lepton type of the neutrino, you'll find that it's not muon type anymore if you let it travel far enough. Yeah, neutrinos are weird.